Hey there, this is a Kane counter video intended to fill you in on everything you need to know to deal with Kane when he's on the opposite team. If there's a champion you find yourself struggling with in your solo queue games and you're tired of banning it, then feel free to drop a comment and let us know. If you're interested in learning more about Kane or any other champion, then head on over to the Mobile Links website where you can see everything you need to know, including builds, combos, pro builds, tips, and more. So, first off, what does Kane do? Kane is an incredibly unique jungler whose playstyle can range from ultra healing bruiser to annoyingly elusive assassin depending on the needs of his team and the weaknesses of the enemy. In dark in form, Kane acts as a frontline bruiser who is incredibly tough to kill and can provide a decent amount of CC and also stall out fights for his team. As a shadow assassin, Kane is an incredibly slippery backline threat who can constantly set up flanks and one shot squishy targets. To hone in on that, Kane's strengths are his efficient jungle clear. His incredible fast and healthy jungle clear allows Kane to keep pace with the best power farmers like Hecarim, Udia, or Karthus. Junglers with weaker clears will fall behind quickly and be pressured to make plays on the map or become irrelevant by 15 minutes. Mobility and terrain scaling. Kane's shadow step allows him to take unique gang paths that are unavailable to most other junglers, and also lets him invade and counter jungle with relatively low risk if he has his E available. He can also use it to reposition after skirmishes or in the middle of a team fight to split the enemy's focus. Survivability. In Rast form, Kane can heal insane amounts and it feels impossible to cut through his health bar. In blue form, Kane is super slippery with his shadow step on a very low cooldown. In both forms, Kane can be really difficult to lock down. Now for his weaknesses, his weak early game. Before getting his form, Kane is incredibly vulnerable, giving enemies a good window to punish him before he scales. They can evade for kills, bully him off camps, or just avoid his ganks to completely deny orbs. Needs gank assist. Without follow up CC or his enemies overextending, Kane has difficulty finding successful ganks or dueling 1v1, at least before his forms. Coordinated enemies. When teams group up, they can usually play around his mobility and ultimate and prevent him from singling out priority targets or surviving with his ultimate. We're going to dive in specifically how to counter Kane, but first here's an overview of the major tips that we're breaking down further in this video. First up is abuse his weak early game. Kane lacks early kill pressure and is a sitting duck if caught out in his own jungle. By invading, you can force him out of the jungle and prevent him from clearing at his usual pace. It's important to take every opportunity to delay his mid-game power spike, especially when playing early game champions. Next is to get deep wards. Kane exploits unorthodox gank paths that surprise enemies and increase his likelihood of success. Deep wards are much better at detecting his ganks early on as opposed to standard ward locations. This will help you play around his pathing and prevent him from collecting early orbs and will delay his transformation. Avoid walls. For Kane, walls act both as a flank opportunity as well as an escape path. Fighting in more open spaces will increase the distance he has to close when joining a fight or trying to escape. Next is to build Grievous Wounds and Anti-Burst. Depending on his form, Kane will either act as a super healing bruiser or a bursty assassin. Grievous Wounds will enable you to cut down Rasp before he can heal back to full with Conqueror, Gore Drinker and Ult. Anti-Burst items will force Blue Kane to select a different target or severely limit his kill potential on you. And finally, to fight is 5. Kane excels in chaotic skirmishes where he can buy time with his mobility and sustain through a drawn out fight. By grouping as 5, your team can more easily coordinate crowd control to burst him down or deny him from escaping after using Umbral Trespass. Fighting as 5 gives you a much better chance of controlling his team fight prowess. If you're going into a game against a Kane, those are solid bases to remember and will help you be successful. It's always good to think about when a champion is strongest or weakest. Kane is his best in the mid game, after he's completed an item and gotten his form. He will shine in skirmishes, especially in disjointed fights around objectives. You can be more aggressive early game to delay this, but also make sure to group and stop him picking anyone off before a fight. As for when he's weakest, it's in the early game. Kane is most exploitable in the early game before he has his level 6 or his form, so invade him often and look to put him behind. Now let's talk about specifically how we can deal with his early game. So first off, as we said, invade. If you have strong early champs or leads, you can use that pressure to invade Kane and deny his farm, and you may even end up grabbing kills if he tries to defend camps instead of giving them up. Next is deny orbs. The easiest way to delay Kane's power spike is to deny his orbs by denying him skirmish opportunities. If Kane is in the area, you can opt for more conservative calls to make sure he can't cash in on any opportunistic fights. This is especially important if your champion gives Kane the orbs that he wants. Conqueror means he's going Rast, and Melee's a higher priority. Dark Harvest means Shadow Assassin and Range Champs a higher priority. Recognising whether or not you have a target on your back will help you to play around his game plan. Next is to ward common gang paths. Kane is like to avoid normal gang paths and instead use Shadow Step to come from unorthodox angles. Deeper wards will help spot these ganks out earlier. Now taking a look at Kane's strongest point, his mid game, and how to deal with him. First up is Grievous Wounds. Especially if he gets red form and has enchanters on his team, Grievous Wounds will stifle Kane's healing and allow you to burst him down. Sooner is better than later, because one big team fight win can turn what seems like a winning game into a snowball that's hard to recover from. 
Next is to burst him before he can ult. Unless your team is significantly behind, you should be able to focus Kane down if you land some hard CC. This prevents him from getting the heal or buying time for his teammates to follow up. There's of course the benefit of the tilt factor when his teammates ping that his ult is up after he dies. Next is to fight in open spaces. This isn't a free pass for ARAMs, but avoiding walls will prevent Kane from escaping or repositioning during fights. If he escapes in the middle of a fight, he will have the opportunity to heal back up for a bit and potentially come back in for the cleanup. If Kane has ulted you, be sure to move away from those walls so he can't instantly go into a shadow step afterwards. Next is to abuse his animations. Kane's Q and W lock him into animations, except Blue Kane's W, which is a bit different. But that's a great window of time to use your skill shots. This is possibly your best opportunity to lock him down if you don't have point and click CC available and are skill shot reliant. Now, finally, dealing with Kane in the late game. So first off, abuse his R. Kane will usually use his ult when he's finishing a kill or low on health, or he's looking to dodge a skill shot. If you're able to pull him away from walls and into your teammates while he's an unbull trespass, you're almost guaranteed to at least trade a kill back. Your team can focus him down before he's able to get to a wall to E away, and by pulling away from the enemy team together when Kane ults, you can isolate him and then re-engage the enemy team after he's dealt with. Next is vision control. Play around areas where you have vision control, making it hard for Kane to surprise you with a flank. Do your best to establish vision ahead of objective timers and he will end up wasting his E just looking for a flank opportunity. You can then engage on him or the enemy team with his best mobility spell on cooldown. Group is 5. Kane's at his best in messy skirmishes. In organized and coordinated 5v5 fights, it's much easier to focus him down and deny his disruption of burst potential. Split pushing or divided fights will give Kane the exact scenario he's looking for, and you shouldn't be surprised if he punishes you for it. Now finally, let's talk a little bit about itemization against Kane. So first off, when Kane goes dark and harassed, his healing can feel oppressive. To cut him down a size, you'll want to build Grievous Wounds, and this will allow you to drastically reduce how much you can sustain in fights, especially if you have the upgraded item that gives you 60%. The anti-shielding effect of Serpent's Fang is also effective if he's built Sterex Gage or he's getting shields from his allies who are enchanters. As Shadow Assassin, Kane relies on his burst damage for impact in the game. Sacking armor allows you to negate the advantage of his lethality, so look to do that if it works with your build. Also, it may sound obvious, but control wards and upgraded trinkets are extremely helpful in spotting out his flanks. Assassins can't kill what they can't flank. Other burst items like Zonya, Shieldbow, Locket, Serex, and Guardian Angel all can meet your anti-burst needs as well. That wraps everything up for our Kane counter video. If you enjoyed this video, then you can find more counter videos on our website or in the playlist link below, and be sure to subscribe to be alerted for when we cover a new champion. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again.